Okay, we're just waiting for a few more people to join and then we will get the meeting started. Aaron, I see that there's three people in the waiting room. Is that correct? No, is everybody on? I have disabled the waiting room, so everybody should be oh, able sorry. to come in. That is probably old then. Okay, let's go ahead and get started for the night. Welcome to the March meeting of the Portland Modern Quilt Guild. All month I've been thinking it was April, so I'm sorry if I accidentally say Welcome to the April meeting. Welcome to the March meeting. Closed captions are available. If you have questions about how to access those, please put them in the chat box and somebody um, can walk you through. You can um, just write a personal message to Erin and she'll, she'll let you know how to access those because I can't remember every time. While we're waiting for everybody to get set, um, we are going to start with a little bit, just like five minutes of business so that people don't miss out. And let's see, my slides are not, there we go. And we would first like to start by thanking our business sponsors and you can find discounts for them in our members only section of our website. We will do a little programs preview so that you know what's coming up next. So next month, April, is Tara Thonin. She is doing a presentation on April 15th for our guild at the normal time, 7 p.m. Pacific. And she's presenting two workshops that are now sold out, but wait lists are available. So I encourage you to sign up because you never know what could happen. Somebody could need to drop out and you could get a spot. In May, we will be hosting Pantera St. Montaigne and she will be talking about block printing. Her presentation for the Guild will be on May 20th, once again at 7 p.m. Pacific time. And her workshop will be on May 22nd. The scholarship for her workshop opens April 12th and the workshop will be on sale to all members on April 19th. So make sure to write down those days. I know that um, sometimes workshops sell out fast and it's 6 p.m. that they usually go on sale. In June, we have an exciting program. We will be hosting Amanda Carey and the rest of the Quilt Buzz podcast. They will be recording a special podcast um, with members of our guild, and they will be um, broadcasting that on their podcast um, once they do all the editing. And um, so that'll be really exciting because it's really a, quite a different program than what we're used to. Um, there will be a workshop on June 19th um, with Amanda Carey, and she will be teaching quilt broidery, which you can see a little picture of what she's done. And if you um, go to her website, um, if you can see some amazing things that she's done with quilts um, using her quilt broidery technique. This presentation will be on June 17th, so the normal third Thursday of the month. However, it will be at 5 p.m. Pacific time, um, most of these, I believe all of these ladies are on the East Coast, so we needed to um, have a little bit earlier of a time so that they were um, nice and fresh. Um, if you do end up missing out on the meeting, please know that the recording they will have available um, through their podcast. So once they, you know, process it and edit it, you will be able to listen to it. Uh, and as always, um, the business portion of the meeting will be put on YouTube. Um, the the quilt broidery workshop will be on June 19th and we will have a scholarship that will open on May 10th and then tickets for the workshop will be on sale May 17th. And with that, I would like um, to introduce uh, Susan and she is going to do Sandra's introduction. Um, and Susan is, if you don't know, she is our programs coordinator for this year. And so Susan, if you're here, you on mute. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much. Um, Sandra, we've been looking forward to this for months, so I'm so excited that it's finally here. Um, we're so excited to welcome you to PMQG tonight. Um, we're so lucky Sandra will be sharing a collection of her beautiful denim quilts, including um, her ingenious designs, repurposing old jeans and elevating them to true works of art, everything from utilitarian to intricate. Her thoughtful approach to reuse includes such personal elements. 
like spotlighting buttons, pockets, and seams in a larger design, indigo dyeing vintage linens, adding rich texture and deep meaning through her hand quilting and boro stitching, and so many other techniques she'll be sharing her own take on. Along with teaching, designing, and speaking on modern quilting, Sandra is also an ultra creative fashion designer using bold lines and saturated colors in her work. Like her quilts, there is so much hand in her garments from Sashiko stitch jackets and visibly mended jeans and overalls to old quilts revived as coats, tops, pants, skirts, and even stylish and striking bomber jackets. She also uses gorgeous African, Japanese, European, and Australian fabrics in both her clothing and quilt designs bringing international spirit and fresh energy to her work. Some other recent inspirations she shared include her beautiful Southern California home, her sorority Alpha Kappa Alpha, her renowned sorority sister, Madam Vice President Kamala Harris, her family, travel, art, faith, texture, and line. She's a Bernina ambassador, RFL artisan and designer, and an Ulfa maker, and has appeared on the quilt show, spoken and taught at QuiltCon together, and one, was one of Joanne Fabric's seven designers spotlighted for Black History Month just this year. She's also been featured in Quilt Folk, Simply Modern, Quilt Now, and Make Modern. Her amazing denim quilt workshop on Saturday, she's teaching for us, is sold out, I'm sorry to say but there are three spots left in her bomber jacket class on Sunday. And if you're a PMQG member, we are offering the friendly price of $30 per class. One of um, our wonderful president, Chris Batten's initiatives this year is to make our workshops and events truly accessible. And it's something that we're very proud of. So be sure and jump in and sign up if you're interested because it's going to be spectacular. Um, please join me in welcoming Sandra Johnson. We cannot wait to see your quilts. Thank you. Well, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for inviting me. I mean, like, yeah. I, I'm excited. Um, if you guys want, I can, um, for the bomber jacket, I can put it on my Instagram feed. I know there was a lady this week, one that asked me about my bomber jacket when I was going to um, teach it again. I didn't know if you guys were had any openings still, um, but I can market it too if you want me to. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye, so guys. If you're in the meeting and you're thinking about taking the bomber jacket, you better sign up now. So thank you so much for joining us, Sandra. Thank you. Thank well, you, guys. I'll see you guys on Saturday and Sunday. Yes. We will rock it. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. I am going to go back to sharing my screen. Okay. Okay. So Erin, have you started recording again? I have. Okay, perfect. So um, we have the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show is coming up and our PMQG theme is renewal. And I wanted to just um, give you all some ideas of, you know, you might have a quilt that fits this theme. And um, if I show your quilt during this presentation, you should probably submit it to um, the show. So renewal, a quilt that you might already have, it could be a UFO that you finally finished. So in this example, this is Jenny's quilt and um, it was her longest to complete UFO. And I just, I think it's stunning and definitely renewal. Um, Anne Jenkins made this quilt. You could um, interpret the renewal theme as using a uh, different fabric. So vintage sheets, um, maybe scraps, maybe um, mask scraps um, that could all be tied into renewal. Renewal, did you participate in the cut, up, cut it up challenge? Um, this was Rachel Cook's um, Cut It Up Challenge. And the original blocks were done by um, Ann Matlack and the, that's the quote that she made. And um, definitely um, could be tied into renewal. Renewal, repurposed denim. 
So if you're, I don't know if you'll be able to finish a quilt by um, the deadline, but we're, you know, if you're in the workshop to make um, a denim quilt, you will learn some techniques and you could definitely take that and apply that to our renewal theme. This one was by Beth Wells and it's absolutely stunning. And I think it would look great at the Sisters Quilt Show. So with that in mind, um, the submission details are the minimum size is 40 by 40. The maximum is 102 inches on any one side. The submissions are now open and to submit, you need to go onto our website um, under the tab sisters, which is under get involved. And the last day to submit a quilt is going to be April 30th and we need completed quilts submitted. So that being said, look through all of your quilts. I know you have a ton of them around. You probably have a quilt that you could tie into the renewal theme. We would love to show it. Oops, I'm, I'm sorry. I am going the wrong way. Okay, and with that, Susan is going to talk about our um, special labeling event. Hi, um, thank you so much to everyone who came to the Quilter Filter on Thursday. I just wanted to share a bit of information about it because we were able to record the program. So anyone who's interested, if you got your beautiful happy mail envelope from Renee, who sent every single 2021 member a PMQG label, just like the one at the top of the screen. Um, we did a special meetup uh, last Thursday going over tips and ideas for what to write, how to write it, um, just labeling ideas and um, ways to just kind of catch up if it's a quilt you made a while ago and you want to capture those special details. But what I was very excited about is as um, PMQG historian, I have been able to start the labeling process for three quilts that we collectively made in 2012, which you can see a few photos on the left side. Um, they are beautiful quilts made with Michael Miller cotton couture fabrics. I was able to share a bit of their stories at our event. And I'm going to label all three of them so that their story really continues. And every single maker of a block is named. You can see in the small photo of the label that I was able to capture all um, 16 block makers. And it was just such a joy to kind of catch up to that beautiful collective work and share who was part of it. So we had such a nice time. Um, the video of the event, which includes tons of tips and tricks on labeling, is on our YouTube channel. So please just watch it anytime you have a chance and uh, just grab a Micron pen or another acid-free archival ink pen. Uh, I recommend sandpaper or freezer paper for a backing. It makes it a lot easier to write on your labels watch the video when you get a minute and then just um, label a quilt, just one, start with one. You don't have to do every quilt you've ever made, but um, we're also hoping to have PMQG labels that would potentially be for sale in our shop. And especially when we're able to meet in person again, it would be so fun to have labels available for members to buy at a, you know, an inexpensive price. They're available on Spoonflower. You can buy a fat quarter or yardage, but we'd love to have them available individually or in packs of five. So let us know if you're interested in that. Um, I want to thank everyone who participated with a special thank you to um, Julene Bajada, who shared some of her really beautiful labels, including the one that you'll see in the bottom right hand corner that has embroidery over her own writing and is just a really clever and beautiful way to label a quilt. Um, I hope you'll enjoy using your PMQG label and please email the guild if you have any questions or want to connect about it. Maybe we could do another one, but it was just so fun to get together with everybody and just chat about quilts. And I also want to mention a special shout out to Angie Reed who did such a nice label for a quilt her mother-in-law made for her daughter and um, was able to embroider over her mother-in-law's original handwriting when it started fading. 
and created and captured that. So labels don't have to be crisp and perfect. You could label a quilt that was a family heirloom or something special someone else made. It's really just an opportunity to tell quilt stories. And we hope that sharing a fun, happy mail label with everyone is a good way to start. And then you'll get into it and like me label 40 quilts over about two years and get very into it. So anyway, I just wanted to um, share that that's available and that we're here. If you have any questions or thoughts on it, please let us know. We are really excited to be in this community together. So thank you so much. Thanks, Susan. I also wanted to say, um, you know, thanks to Susan for putting that together and um, writing the blog post and yeah, everything, all the work that went into it. And also a special thanks to Renee who sent out all of the labels and that was a huge undertaking. Like I, I can't even imagine. So thank you guys both so much. Okay, is Anne available to talk about the virtual retreat? You could unmute. Actually, Jenny's going to. Oh, Jenny, I'm sorry. I thought it was going to be Anne, hello. Oh, we, we, we trained it back and forth. <laughs> Um, the information's up there where I hope you're going to join us. Um, I could give a sort of sneak preview and say that our committed speaker at the moment for the Sunday morning coffee is Christina Camelli, who I asked to talk about how she chose the colors for her fabric lines, just as a, a kickoff point. Um, we hope to have a lot of open sewing time, but a lot of chance to talk and share tricks and what we're doing with each other. Sounds great. And so any it's questions, I can answer them. Yeah, does anybody have any questions? You can put them in the chat box. Um, and it should be a really fun weekend. And the tickets are on sale now. But so thank you, Jenny. You're welcome. Okay, so the free table is now in Hillsboro. So um, I'm excited um, that we are kind of moving it around to kind of spread the love. I know that we have a lot of members over in the Beaverton Hillsboro area. Um, so um, I think it's great that you'll be able to maybe get to the free table this weekend. Um, so also um, I just wanted to mention that if you would like to host the free table in your area, please email the guild for more information. One of the benefits to hosting the free table is you kind of get first dibs on everything that comes in. And I can tell you, there's some really nice pieces of fabric that come into the free table. So um, I highly recommend um, checking that out and that um, you can find the address for the free table in the members only section. And it's from 10 to seven on March 20th and 21st. So Charity Sew Drop-Off is going to be on March 27th from 10 to 1. Um, this address can also be found on the members only section. At this time, we're not going to be taking any free table drop-off. Um, to do that, you, um, it would require somebody to come and pick up all the free table things from Kath and then store it at our house until the free table and then schlep it all over there. So um, please, no free table drop-off. Um, but I do highly encourage you to go to Charity Sew. They have um, panels that are already sandwiched. So if you're practicing your free motion skills, um, that is a great way. And I will tell you, the kids at Dornbecker, they don't care about your quilting. They have no idea what quilting is supposed to look like. So um, it's a great way to get that practice in. And um, they also have kits. Um, you can make these wonky stars. And if you don't know how to, there's um, YouTube tutorials for that. And also, um, I believe that they have other quilt kits if you're interested in that. I mean, it's just you show up and see what there is to sew. If you like doing binding, there's binding available. If, I mean, sky's the limit. The, anything quilting related, they have it at Charity Sew. And it all goes to Dornbecker, Pick You, and the, I mean, the kids just love doing these quilts and it's, it's so wonderful, so thank you. Charity Zipper Bags is um, going. There's, um, I believe there's still kits available. Um, drop off and pick up is preferred to um, happen on Mondays. 
The phone number to text and the address is in the members only section. They do need some donations of zippers, um, like nine inch zippers. I think I, I put greater than nine inch, but nine inch zippers. I think seven inch would also work. Um, they also need gallon size freezer bags to make kits and fabric that's a half yard or more. And these zipper bags um, go to Portland Homeless Family Solutions. And what they do then is put um, personal care items in them and then distribute them to people that are in need. The um, block of the month. Um, so the April block of the month, um, is Tara available to unmute and talk about this design? I am. Perfect. If I got my camera to turn on there, maybe. Can you see my face? Yes. Oh, good. Awesome. Yeah, so um, March we did, you can see a picture there of what we did. Um, Again, the block of the month is all, it's all this teardrop shape. There's 12 of them in total. Um, and uh, so it'll make quite an awesome quilt top. So in March, our theme was uh, water pollution or ocean plastics, um, clean water. There's lots of ways that you can interpret that. So um, I've actually had a really awesome time seeing what everybody's come up with. Um, this block especially, um, gave you the opportunity to use use up tiny scraps. These are originally one inch squares. So um, pieced, they become half inch squares. And so I've seen lots of people use up some crazy funky prints, um, which is awesome because it mimics, um, you know, man-made plastics. Um, but uh, I did want to turn the time over. Are we going to have Becky talk about April? Uh, Becky's going to talk about April next month. Oh, perfect. Okay, so April is actually out of my two favorite blocks in this quilt. April is one of them. So I'm really excited about it. It's going to be about crimes against humanity. Um, so it's a pretty heavy hitter. It's going to be a beautiful block. I will tell you that it's, um, it's an applique block, a raw edge applique block. Um, so I would be, however, there's many different techniques that you can use as far as blanket stitch or straight stitch or however you want to do that. It's totally up to you. But um, I would suggest having some sort of like uh, interfacing or some sort of stabilizer to stabilize the, the layer that you're going to, to put on top. Um, of, of your fabric and applique that on, if that makes sense. So just um, maybe, and, and it's not, you don't need a very large piece. I'd say something like this, <laughs> maybe <laughs> as, big as, your, as big as your face, maybe. So maybe scrounge around, see if you have a scrap of interfacing or, or something like that, um, that would work well. So I'm actually going to piece my, my sample one tomorrow, but you guys won't see it till April 1st. Um, I will say I'm having an excellent time um, with the small group. Yes, that we should mention yeah. that. There is a small group for the block of the month. So if you are worried about learning these techniques or sewing that curve, go to the small group. I mean, and, and there's an Instagram um, chat group, right? Is that correct? Yeah, there is an Instagram chat group. Yeah, and that's been really nice because you can share your pictures directly in there if you want and they don't get lost in the in the hashtag if you want to make sure other people see it or if you want input on somebody to um, say should I use this color or this color that's a great spot to do that and the the um, small group chat is chat chat has been really really fun and that's a great place to ask your questions on technique and um, like Chris just said but yeah thank you so much I'm excited for April Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I will say it is not too late to join. I bought my pattern in January and I have made zero blocks. I am <laughs> planning on making them, but I'm telling you, it is not too late to join. And Tara um, for this year has is offering the, um, the pattern to the guild at a special price. So please check out in the members only section. There's a link to her website to purchase the pattern and it is definitely not too late to start. I think I'm starting mine this month. So absolutely. Yeah, yes. awesome, thanks. So yeah, join us, it will be fun. Okay. Um, the Sunday small group, this is just a reminder for people who um, attend that. The Zoom link will be changed for that this Sunday um, because the guild will be using the the guild zoom for um, 
for Sandra's class for her workshops. So um, we do have another Zoom link available. So make sure to check out the new Zoom link in the members only section in case if you save the Zoom link somewhere else, you'll be trying to get into a class and it'll be confusing. So please um, follow the um, Zoom link from the uh, website. Okay, so volunteers, we are in need of volunteers. We need um, a couple of different things. So we need drivers. We are getting a lot of um, people that are donating their fabric scraps to us, which is wonderful. So um, our charity sew program uses a lot of those scraps and then anything that they can't use will then go to the free table. But people are offering these from all over Portland metro area and we just aren't able to get to them to pick them up. And so we really would like to get a group of people that from all different locations to volunteer to just be a driver to just pick up fabric and um, for the guild and then possibly drop it off at Charity Sew or at the free table. Um, and we also really need a volunteer coordinator. And basically, if you're interested in being a volunteer coordinator, um, as you might have seen in our emails, we have a button at the bottom that you can fill out a little survey if you're interested in volunteering. As the volunteer coordinator, you would be in charge of contacting the people that fill out that form and kind of see what are they interested in doing and kind of helping them find um, the job that goes along with that. So if you are interested in um, volunteering, please, please, please email the Guild or fill out that little um, survey that's at the end of the emails. And let's see, we had a classified ad come in and this is for a job which is um, with this company called Hot Squash and they are based in, I believe, uh, Tualatin or Tigard. I, I'm, I, my mind doesn't um, remember right now, but basically it's just a straight stitch only is used for this job. It's hand stitching um, and they are just wanting you to work with um, some silk velvet to help create um, their sort of decorative squashes. And so if you are interested or have any questions about the job, um, please reach out to Daria at hotsquash.com and her phone number is right up there. And also if you Google hot squash, you can find out more about her and her company. Okay, I wanted to talk about quilt count together really quick and highlight our members quilts that were um, shown there. And if your quilt is not up here, please, please, please email us. It's, um, there were so many to look through and I know that I wasn't able to look at all of the quilts. So, um, but I just really wanna, wanted to highlight what our members have been up to. So the first quilt is our community outreach quilt, which I thought was really fantastic. So thanks to everybody who worked on that. Um, the middle one is Sarah Flynn's strawberry blue quilt. So this was a part of the 2020 Modern Monthly. So this was a pattern that she wrote for the MQG. And then the next one is my quilt, which um, I was a part of the special exhibit for the Modern Classics. And basically um, that was uh, taking a quilt that was previously published in the Modern Monthly and using um, the MQG's uh, color palette that they chose and recreating that quilt. So Erin Case, she had two quilts at QuiltCon. She had um, her lockdown leftovers, which was displayed in the improv category and three quarters, which was part of the fabric challenge. Beth Wells also had two quilts hanging at QuiltCon. Um, she had uh, her two minis. So um, Diamonds and Stars, I believe that was the Allison Glass um, Kaleidoscope Challenge. And then her Painter Palette Solids Challenge. So those were really beautiful. And I'm really happy to see that they were included. And then Joe Wallischlager had her um, Home is Where the Heart Is quilt, which is, uh, was also a part of our Bauhaus um, quilts for sisters last year. So stunning work, everybody. And finally, um, Anne Marie had three quilts. So she had um, Today's Direction, and then in the middle, Seasons, which actually won um, third place 
for the um, fabric challenge. And I, I mean, like when I saw that she won, I was like, oh my gosh, I know her. <laughs> It was so exciting. And then she also did a um, modern classic um, using the Jawbreakers pattern. And um, that was the um, using the colors that the MQG um, picked. So congratulations to everybody that um, had a quilt displayed at QuiltCon and to Anne Marie for um, winning a ribbon. So way to the AP MQG. Okay, so we are going to do our business member spotlight. And this month, um, first up is Tammy. And so Tammy, if you're here and you wanna unmute, and if you want to, you can start your video. Hi. 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 Uh, there we go, now I got the video started. Um, so I'm located in the Flight and neighborhood of Vancouver. I believe I'm near Aaron and I do long arm quilting. I have a computerized um, machine. I do edge to edge quilting. And one of the things I love to do is to work closely with my clients and pick out what the best um, pattern would work with your quilt. Um, I used to be a swim art designer, so I'm trained in art and design. So I like to use that. And the other thing I do is I make commission t-shirt quilts. So in the screen on the far left, um, a client um, from the Bay Area shipped me all of her concert tees that she was no longer wearing because she was now a mom and didn't need to wear these. And um, it's great because there were, I mean, some really cool skulls and, and I thought it was kind of cute that there were a couple FAO Schwartz t-shirts uh, mixed in with all these like, um, um, metal um, t-shirts and Lincoln Park and all that stuff. So that was great. Um, and it's a nice way to remember things. And for all of our um, members who live outside the area, I do free um, um, return shipping. So I've had people as far as um, Brooklyn, New York and Michigan send me um, quilts. So it's great. Oh yes, and Anne, um, I did a couple of quilts for Anne in Salem, Oregon. So, um, if you need anything, let me know. I'll um, work on it for you. Okay, thank you. And you can find all of Tammy's information um, on the business members section of the website. And next up we have Marcy with the Twisted Threads fabric. If you would like to unmute Marcy. Hello. Hi. Hi, okay. Um, hello, I'm Marcy. I'm one half of Twisted Threads fabric. We are an online quilt shop and an Aurifil thread dealer. So we specialize in modern-ish fabrics. I tend to sometimes dabble in Civil War, but don't tell anyone. Um, uh, and bundles and notions in all 270 colors and weights of Aurifil thread at an affordable price. Uh, some of you have already been uh, shopping with us and we're super appreciative. And I'm really excited to finally meet all of you in person someday. Um, we have a coupon code for y'all in shop. Uh, for 15% off your order of 35 or more with free shipping. And as Kimberly found out this morning, local delivery is an option. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to collaborating and chatting and helping you all with your projects. Thank you. So yeah, and if you are looking for the coupon code, it is in the members only section of the website and you can find it there. So thank you. Okay, we're ready for show and tell. So first up, do we have Tamara available to talk about her quilt? I am here. Okay, great. Hello. Um, okay, so this is a baby quilt that I made and I used um, Victoria Finley Wolf's pattern and also her um, template for the Cascade quilt. And I had planned originally to make like a bed size quilt uh, using this pattern. So I'm really glad that I started with the baby quilt because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of bias. And um, I ended up making this quilt, even though it's for a baby, it's almost 60 inches long <laughs> because I needed that much space just to get my color changes and, you know, make the, make the design look good so anyway the baby loves it I've had several pictures of him playing on it so um it was it was great I would do it again but probably a small one again it's beautiful okay 
Okay. And so this quilt, um, I had a very small part in it. I made two of the blocks that are in the dress of the lady there. And the story behind this quilt is that um, in 2014, and I wrote a blog post about it. So it's, it's on the website, but I'll just do a quick synopsis. Um, a, a popular artisan brand uh, released a line of um, clothing that they called Nude. And Bianca Springer, who is a, who is um, Thanks I Made Them, or Thanks I Made It, on um, Instagram. And she's a long time um, sewist garments, mostly garments and has an amazing Instagram feed. She contacted them and just, you know, let them know, hey, not everybody is this color when they're nude. So maybe, you know, call it something else. And they were just very dismissive to her. And so she talked about it with her friend, Hillary Goodwin, whose um, entropy, entropy always wins on Instagram. And Hillary decided to make a quilt to, um, you know, tell this story. And so she appealed to the quilting community to make blocks. Uh, I mean, to make uh, shirt blocks using um, that pattern. And then the quilt went through some different, you know, it took a while to arrive at its final destination, but I think she did an amazing job. And then um, a quilter who I think is in New York named Rachel Dorr, who's just phenomenal, did the quilting. She, she created the lady out of thread. I mean, that's a thread portrait of Bianca. And um, it was about a month ago, it was acquired by the Henry Ford Museum and um, it's on display there right now. So you can, you can read all about it um, in the blog post I wrote and I have some process pictures of the quilting and um, a picture of Bianca and Hillary together at QuiltCon 2020. That's great. And um, just so everybody knows the blog post is online right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, Erin, would you like to unmute? I am unmuted. Hello, everybody. Uh, so this is my QuiltCon quilt, Lockdown Leftovers. This started out uh, its life as uh, leftovers from a Lisa the Unicorn quilt. That's a little apartment pattern. Um, I made one for my son and uh, I used rain, the rainbow she has for a pillow that she designed as all nine of the mains. And the one fabric store I was able to get the colored fabric from, uh, the minimum cut I could get was a yard of each of those. And I like literally needed nine inches or something. So um, I had a lot of leftovers. And so I brought them to a workshop that we had uh, back in 2019 with Katie Peterson. And I made those improv uh, squares and then cut them down into um, half square triangles. And then those sat in my uh, closet in my, um, in my studio here. And then COVID hit and I just had to use what I had. And so I had some of this background fabric that didn't quite match the half square triangle fabrics. And I threw the half square triangles up on the design wall and just moved them around constantly and uh, probably sent Chris way too many photos asking for her opinion <laughs> and uh, ended up making this. And then she suggested doing the spiral quilting uh, and uh, then I made the decision to do that off center. And those lines are a quarter of an inch apart and I am crazy for doing that. So it's done, it got into QuiltCon and I'm really pleased with it. So that's the story of that one. And then if you go forward one more, this is three quarters. Uh, in 2019 and in 2020, uh, I got really into curves and nearly every one of the quilts that I made had curves. Um, I was really scared of doing curves for a long time. And then I took the uh, curves class with Jen Carlton Bailey back in December of 2019 and uh, haven't been scared since. So um, embrace what you're scared of doing. It's well worth it. And um, yeah, that's the story of this one. Then if you go forward, the next couple of people who uh, had 
quilts in show and tell weren't um, in the participant list. So Sailor, are you here? It didn't look like you were. I'll give her a second. She uh, made this quilt Cats for Holly. It's another Elizabeth Hartman pattern and Marcy Martin at Cedar Ridge Quilts quilted it for her. And then if you'll move forward. Uh, this is Jerry's quilt. Jerry, are you here? All right, I didn't see her in the list either. Uh, this is her snowflake, snowflake quilt and she let us know that she put cuddle on the back of this one for extra snuggleability which I didn't know was a word, but I like that as a word. And um, then up next is Patty and she is here. Hi, I'm Patty, I'm new. Um, I'm in a member of the Phoenix Modern Quilt Guild and our challenge this past year was the theme uh, Together Apart. So I made this quilt, by, it's about 18 by 24. I divided the gray fabric up into sections, quilted that, and then used leftover bias tape or bias binding, tubed it, and then edge stitched it on with the weave pattern. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, is Cinder available? I didn't see Cinder in the participant list as well either. I love this photo. <laughs> I know the cat just kills me. Um, so this is a design by Kimberly Ionmo, and she started this in a craftsy class back in 2017. She finished the quilting um, in January of 2021, and she free motion quilted it on a domestic Kenmore machine that she inherited from her mother. Okay, is Gail available? I, again, didn't see Gail in the participant list. Oh, I really wanted to hear her talk about this. She, she gave me some information. So okay. this says, uh, it was made as part of her Chakra quilt series. This is number six of seven. The background is pixelated to represent overwhelming and mixed up thoughts. The wedges represent that spinning feeling you get when you have too many ideas and don't know which way to go. The center is a gem to represent clarity. There is much symbology in the chakra system. I meditate on that symbology to come up with my own representational ideas for my somewhat improv quilt design. I will be releasing a foundation paper piecing pattern for the gem section on my blog within the month. That's beautiful. And then Judy is up next. And I see Judy in the participant list, so we'll let her okay. unmute. There you go. I can't seem to get my video going, but um, this quilt was uh, made a couple of years ago when I was on my Bauhaus kick. kick. Um, it's a Paul Klee painting that looks nothing like this quilt, but um, I grafted out on graph paper and then I just used leftover pieces from several different projects. And then uh, Kimberly was saying she wanted to um, try out her new long arm machine. And actually she ended up finishing it on her brand new long arm machine. Um, and I love what she did to it. I love this pattern and it, she used this neon lime thread that just is outstanding on this quilt. So I'm, it's a charity quilt and we're gonna give it to uh, charity this month. Somebody's gonna be really lucky to get that. Ooh, it's beautiful. And Cheryl, if you're here, could you unmute? Hi, um, so this is my color block flower quilt. Um, the pattern is a new pattern coming out by Sam Hunter, who's in our guild. And I tested it for her because I just love curves, can't get enough of them. Um, this was a really fun one to quilt because there's so much negative space, but I really agonized over what pattern to choose. Um, I finally did this crazy swoosh that is in also lime green thread, um, which really, really stands out. And I used my new favorite batting, the bamboo blend from uh, Quilter's Dream, and I'm so excited to wash it and put it on my bed. That's beautiful. 
Beautiful. Thank you. Is Patty here? Hello. This Hi. doesn't really show the colors very well. Um, I realized after I posted it today, um, but it's all bright, bright colors. And I saw, I think it was on Instagram. This is from Susan Beale's uh, Sew and Quilt book. And somebody had posted that they had made it. And I thought, oh, I have that book. And I was looking for a quick quilt and it was very fun to do. And she has, you're supposed to, each block is supposed to be matched up, but I didn't have, I was using my scraps and I didn't have enough of that. So I just changed it a little bit. But um, in the back is um, a bright colored of uh, colors of numbers and uh, a bright pattern of numbers. And it's going to um, go to the uh, NICU at Portland Providence. Um, little grandson spent some time there this summer. And so I'm gonna be sending a lot of little baby quilts up there um, for all the other families that are up there. So this was really fun to make. And really the NICU is gonna be lucky to get that. Whoever, yes. <laughs> whoever brings that home is gonna be really happy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. It's ready here. Yes, I am here. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. This is my um, faux vintage um, quilt for the um, bomber class that um, Sandra is teaching on Sunday. Um, the half square triangles, the small half square triangles have been around since 1994 um, when I crazily was making a quilt. Um, it was early in my quilting career and I gave up on it because it wasn't doing what I thought it would do. So they've been sitting there and I brought them out and rejuvenated them and um, they are going to go into this jacket. Um, the blue fabric up in the corner doesn't is all solid blue. Um, it doesn't have that light spot really, although I guess I looking at it, I like that. I may try to achieve it. Um, but those are going to be the sleeves on the bomber jacket. And I am the zipper, you can see the zipper down the center of the front there. And I'm really excited about this, this project. I think it's going to be a, a really cool class. I'm looking forward to it. So that's it. Yeah, that's going to make a lovely jacket. Thank you. That is all that we have for show and tell. And um, that's all that we have for tonight. So I just wanted to quickly summarize um, the important dates that are coming up. And these are all in the calendar on the website. Uh, our next meeting is April 15th at 7 p.m. Pacific time with Tara Fonin. She's presenting two workshops um, that are currently sold out. Our workshops this weekend, um, the denim quilt is sold out, but the bomber jacket still has spaces available. Um, sisters, please, um, the deadline is April 30th. I'm sure you probably have some kind of quilt that you could um, include in the show. So it doesn't have to be finished. This doesn't have to be a recent finish, just as long as it's finished. We would love to see it. Uh, the free table is this weekend and charity quilts is March 27th. Uh, let's see, we have Pantera St. Montaigne's workshop coming up. The scholarship opens on April 12th and it goes on sale April 19th at 6 p.m. So if you were upset that you weren't able to get a spot with Tara, um, mark your calendar um, to get into the block printing if that's something that you're interested in. The quilt broidery um, workshop with Amanda Carey is on June 19th. The scholarship opens May 10th and it goes on sale May 17th. Um, a couple of small groups that are happening soon. The Queer Quilter small group is March 19th. So um, I believe that's tomorrow. Um, the Sunday small group is March 21st. All are welcome to the Sunday small group. Um, and the link for that is on the members only section. And if you're looking to get to know a couple of your other members, it's a nice little small group to join. The block of the month small group is on April 2nd and you will be seeing the newest block, or you could work on one of the older ones if you're having a hard time with one of them and it's not too late to join. And Quilter Filter will be on April 8th and the Zoom links are all in the members only section. So thanks everybody for joining us. And I will go ahead and um, leave the meeting open. 
So if anybody wants to stick around and chat, you are welcome to do so. Thank you so much.